Today I'm going to show you how to create a public key using Linux and then configure your ICE server to use that public key for SSH authentication. This process is only available in ICE 3.2 and newer and this was part of the security update. Now I'm using a Windows machine for all of my lab work and you've probably seen that in previous videos but I am actually going to use a Windows system for Linux to be able to do everything that I need to to configure both the SSH key and ICE. I'm using Windows Terminal as the shell to interface with the Ubuntu distribution that's on my server. As you can see, we can have different shells within this Windows Terminal. We're going to stick with Ubuntu, but if you want to get this or the Windows system for Linux, Go ahead and go to the Microsoft Store, search for Ubuntu to get that distro. Then you can also do a search for Windows Terminal. And they're both free to install, so go ahead and get it from there. Back on our Linux terminal, we're going to create the SSH key. We do this with the command SSH-keygen. Now, when you put the command in, you're going to get prompted for the name of the key. And as you see here, I have the whole path written out. Um, you could use the shortcut for a home. But if you do that here, it's going to fail. You have to use the whole path. I'm going to show you that just so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to put it in the .ssh subdirectory and, and the name is going to be ice key. I'm not going to use the passphrase. And as you see, the creation failed. So put in the whole path. Again, I'm going to skip the passphrase and we can see that it's created the keys. Now if we do a change directory and go to the .ssh folder, We'll do a list and you can see that it creates the ice key and ice key dot pub. The file that we want is the dot pub key. And what I'll do here is I'm going to copy this dot pub key to my windows installation. And the way I do that is to issue the copy command and I copy it to the slash MNT slash C slash SSH directory. Once that's copied, I can go into my windows explorer and open up the folder that I copied it to and copy that file so I can place it onto my FTP server. Now I'm going to go back to my home directory in my Linux terminal. When you're in your home directory, you can always look at your SSH key by issuing this command. Notice that you can reference the SSH key with the home directory shortcut. Now that you have your SSH key here, you could actually just copy this to a text file. Let's go ahead and close the terminal so we have a clean workspace. All right, so real quick, I'm going to show you about environment variables and what I use to be able to connect to ICE. I store my variables in .bash profile. So let's go ahead and open up that file. I use nano, use your favorite text editor. And as you can see with these variables, you put export in front of the variable name and then you define your variable. My variable for my ICE is ICE underscore host name, then equals the fully qualified domain name. Now you can use either the domain name, the host name, if it's local to your network and you're in the same domain or the IP address here, it doesn't matter. Just remember to wrap these values in single quotes. As you can see, I've got a single quote at the beginning and at the end of each one of the values in this text file. You can also define your username and passwords for any logins that you have using the same method as you see here. I have ice underscore username and ice underscore password just for this. Okay, now save the text file and exit your text editor. We're back at the shell. Um, as you can see, we can go ahead and load these environment variables using the source bash profile. Or what I use is I use the source bash RC because the bash RC calls that bash profile. And you'll see why I use the bash RC and why that makes sense a little bit later. To view your environment variables, type environment, pipe, grep, ice this will return a list of results from your environment that contain the word ice in them of course you can see your whole environment just by typing environment use the clear command to start with a fresh screen now we're going to connect to ice using our environment variables to use an environment variables you have to put the dollar sign in front of the variable to tell your shell that you're using an environment variable I'm using the username at hostname prompt and I'll let it ask us for a password. So when it asks we want to continue connecting, we say yes, we put it in our password and we're logged in. Now we're going to create a repository. So let's go into our configuration mode and to create a repository, you just do repository and then whatever the name of the repository is that you want. 
for the URL, we're going to use FTP as the URL. But notice what I just did here. I did FTP colon and then a space. And then I did the two forward slashes and the IP address. This is due to the new CLI subsystem in ICE 3.2. Whereas whenever you define any URL in the CLI, you must put a space in between the colon and the two forward slashes. Now we can define the username and password that's used on our FTP server. Exit the repository configuration and then enable the SSH public key authentication. Once you enable this, you get a warning that states that username password authentication to SSH is now disabled. The last line here actually gives you the command to import your public key from your repository. To import this key, we have to be out of our configuration mode, and then we can issue that command and copy it over. Once the copy is complete, go ahead and log out of ICE. Once you're logged out, we're gonna just, you know, you can press the up arrow here at your shell, and we can log back in using our variables. However, this time the login fails. And if you look at the bottom line here, it says permission is denied because it's looking for that public key authentication. So let's go ahead and clear the screen here, and I'll show you how to set that up so we can log into ICE using that public key that we created earlier. Now we're going to create an alias. An alias is a shortcut to a string of commands. As you can see here, we're going to use an alias named SSHI to run the command SSH using this host file. And at the end, you can see we're using our public key. Once you press enter on that, it automatically saves it. And then if you do alias SSHI, it will show you the alias of SSHI. Aliases are stored in .bash RC. So when you use source bash RC, that will not only load your aliases, but also your environment variables that we created earlier. Now, if we log into ICE using our SSHI alias and our environment variables, then you can see that as soon as we press enter here, it's going to just automatically let us into ICE because that public key requires no password to log into ICE. So now you're probably wondering if there's a way that we can enable the public key authentication for ICE during the installation process. And as luck would have it, there is. So if you're familiar with the ZTP series that I did before, we can use the zero touch provisioning to enable public key authentication. Recap of the ZTP configuration file. These are the main items that we need to ensure that we have in our configuration. The items that are now highlighted in green are the only required items and you could create your configuration file just based upon these items alone. Everything else is optional. Now with 3.2, we've also added the public key authentication, which means that you could just take your public key and paste it right into here and use this to create your ZTP configuration file. Of course, we still have the same optional components that we did before, but now we've added the ability to skip the ping test, the DNS check, and the NTP checks during the installation, which depending on your staging environment can be very helpful. So all the new 3.2 configuration options are highlighted in orange. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if there are any topics on ICE that you'd like to see me cover in a future video.